Hello, I'm Joe Newmeyer, film critic for New York's WOR Radio. Thank you for joining us for this four-year consideration Q&A for the film American Night. It's my honor now to welcome the film's editor, Zach Steinberg. Welcome, Zach. Thanks so much for being here. Hey, Joe. So great to have you here. Congratulations on the film. The film is an exciting and dynamic noir drama with a totally captivating style set against the backdrop of the art world. Talk to us, Zach, about the way you approached writer and director Alessio Della Valle's story, which in the final film cuts back and forth in time and really builds momentum by playing with that nonlinear narrative. What was your approach to editing it? It was really interesting. That's, that the very thing you're saying is what captivated me in the, when I first read the script. I, I liked it a lot. Um, this movie was when I, a little unusual situation in that I came on after they had finished shooting and they had an assembly of the film that they weren't that happy with. And they asked me to take a look at it. They thought they, they loved the film, uh, what they had. They really felt they had a good movie in there. So I looked at it and it was, the movie was written, as I say, in that fractured timeline, which is very attractive, but there were things about it, the way it was broken that didn't quite work. So make a long story short, what I essentially did was I put it back together linearly just for myself, mm -hmm. took a look at it and I rebroke it oh. totally in the spirit of how Alessio had written it. But I rebroke it where I felt we weren't injuring the character arcs and the story arcs. So it became a lot more, the trick with a movie like this is keeping people involved, keeping the audience involved. That's really interesting. I'm wondering what were some plot elements maybe that you saw through that process or within the script or obviously throughout the natural uh, editing process, but maybe that sort of re refracturing as, as it were. Uh, some plot elements that you saw was really essential and which through editing were able to kind of bring to the forefront uh, that also worked with Alessio's visions and his ideas. Right, well, oddly, I, I really think the plot in the movie is secondary to the, the characters, you know, if that makes sense. Um, the plot is very simple, you know, the everybody's after Warhol's Pink Marilyn. That's what, you know, many of the audience probably knows that's what we call the MacGuffin. Um, that's what everybody's after in the movie. And that also allows it to be set in the art world, which is a fascinating world. I love the way Alessio populated the production with fantastic artists, you know, you've, you've, I mean, Jeff Koons, et cetera. Um, and, but what I was after looking at it was I want to track these characters' emotions. And basically, there's a little triangle going on between Paz Vega, Jonathan Rise Myers, and Emil Hirsch. Uh, they're both interested, both those gentlemen are interested in Paz Vega. Um, she, at various points, is interested in both of them. Um, they're, everybody's after the Pink Marilyn. So the, so the plot is really quite simple. And, um, it's not really what I would call a quintessential plot driven movie. It's really more about characters and their intersections and how one unexpected event triggers another unexpected event. Yeah, yeah. I think it's really dynamic in so many ways because it really gives you a sense of, like I called it at the start, it's a, it's a neo-noir, maybe a neon noir might be another way to put it. <laughs> uh, it has so many uh, vibrant elements to it. Your filmography as an editor runs the gamut in terms of genre, uh, but you have a specialty with fast moving complex action dramas, including Bound and Lord of War, In Time, Pacific Rim Uprising. And of course you won an Oscar and an Ace Award for editing The Matrix and won an Ace Award and got an Emmy nomination for Gotti. When you're approaching a story that is working on different levels, let's say like American Night, Zach, what are some rules you keep in mind or ideas you think uh, are important to emphasize or maybe not lose track of in the editing? Are there, are there kind, of, kind of maxims that you kind of keep in mind for, for all your projects? Really, it's pretty simple and, and they're, they're fairly well established precepts in editing. I mean, I never like to let the audience get ahead of the movie. I think that's, that's, a, that's death, you know, when, when you always want to keep the audience engaged and that means not letting them know what's going to be happening. Um, I also am a big fan of the audience understanding everything both in the plot and where you are geographically at any given time. Um, I always like, I, I always look to Steven Spielberg. Um, I think he's a master of those things and I learned a lot watching his movies um, in, the, in that area and I admire it tremendously and I, I kind of consciously emulate it. <laughs> 
Yeah. Yeah. One of the things I, I found in this film is that there's never there's never any confusion. You're always and I and you mentioned Spielberg. It sort of reminds me of, you know, Saving Private Ryan is one of those ag- examples where you're never you're never confused. You know that the Germans are here. The allies are here. They have to get over that that hump in the beach and on Normandy Beach. Uh, and it's the same American Night has the same sort of uh, approach in a lot of ways. I'm. I was never confused. There's always sort of a sense of where people are in both in in the the space of the of the scene and also within the context of the film and the story. There's a there's a very um very concise and clear sense of where everybody is and where the story is. Right. I'm really tickled to hear you say that uh, that you had so much clarity because that was one of the big challenges for me with the movie because I, as I said, when we first started talking, I loved the script. I loved the broken timeline. And I found this to be the case many times that every movie has issues that sometimes are not evident in the script and become glaringly evident in the editing room to everybody. Everybody looks and says, like, why the hell didn't we see that, um, you know, back, back in the old days? You know, why we... <laughs> anyway, but so one of the um, things we needed to do in this movie, because it was such a challenging structure, was to... In cl- make sure that clarity that you said you had, which I'm so glad to, to hear that, um, make sure that clarity was in the movie. And that's where we came back to what I ended up doing was restructuring it, but totally within the spirit of the way it was written. It was written to have a structure as you see now. Yeah, it just wasn't yeah. the precise structure. <laughs> Right. That, that actually leads into the, the next question I have, which is that kind of breaking American night up into sections. Uh, uh, you know, let's talk about that because it obviously comes with, whether in the script phase or while editing, it obviously also comes with its own trapdoors, sort of, uh, in terms of narrative and the film's flow. Right, Zach? Yes. Yes, absolutely. And that was, um, you're really hitting on some really salient points. Um, one of the things that I love about the movie is that essentially you're looking at the same events a second time from a different perspective. And so when I did the restructuring, I really had that in mind. I mean, there were the restructuring didn't happen all at once. If I did one pass, then we see other problems or see other issues, or maybe I think I'm fixing a problem, but I've actually created a problem. Um, you know, so it's a, it's a, um, it's a, you know, it's like editing is a process, you know, it's like peeling an onion, you know, you're, you're slowly peeling it back and getting to the, the core of the, of the, what you need. And yeah. um, so I arrived at this idea to have part one, part two, and part three, which by the way, Alessio had a form of that in the script. He, mm-hmm. uh, he had sections, they just weren't exactly part one, part two, and part three. And I think the thing I, found that um, I was really happy and he loved right away to his credit. Um, One of the, there's a piece of art in the movie. It's a piece of neon art. It's in the gallery and the, and the art says art, the, this is a neon sign as an art piece that says art plus life equals chaos. So I came up with this idea to start part one with just art plus life. And then part two, we, we'd see art plus life again, but we see it from the back as though we're now, and I think people understand that, we're now gonna see the movie from a different perspective. And then part three, where everything kind of bangs together, we see art plus life and then equals chaos lights up in neon. (laughs) So um, I enjoy, one of the things I enjoy in editing, especially these days, you know, when I first started working in film back in the days of Police Academy, what came out of the camera was essentially what you edited. you used to have a few things called opticals, very simple. There was no visual effects as we know visual effects now. And uh, as I'm sure many of your audience knows, um, in a modern editing room, visual effects can be such a unique tool. I really loved, I wanted, one of the things I wanted to do in the editing movie was always firmly keep in mind that we were in the art world. Because to me, that was, that made the, that you're always looking for a hook into a story that makes it unique. And to me, that was one of the, really cool, unique aspects of this story. And so I got this idea for, to create a main on end sequence in which we would treat sections of the movie in the style of a known artist, like Jasper Johns or Lichtenstein or Andy Warhol. And once again, I had this extremely talented assistant editor in Rome, Giovanni Pompetti, 
who was able to work with me, listen to what I said, add to it himself. And we basically created this. We then turned that over to a, one of the best title designers in Hollywood, Garson Yu, who really took that idea and elevated it about 200%. And I'm, I'm really proud of the Man on End sequence. That, that's fascinating. I love that stuff. To wrap up, Zach, walk us through a, a scene or section of this film that you particularly love or loved editing or that you think is a, is a great representation of your work and what Alessio was hoping to achieve. I really enjoyed the scene in which um, Paz Vega and Jonathan Rice Myers make love and paint each other. And mm -hmm. we even ended up using a little piece of it later on in the nightclub mm -hmm. when he's about to go off with another woman and he remembers her from that scene. Um, and that really illustrates though, one of the fun things to do in this movie, which was to continually remind the audience, each of these people are very human and mm -hmm. they remember bits of their stories together at mm -hmm. unexpected times. And that was one of the really fun things. We had a lot of um, freedom in the editing to play with how we, took a little piece of a scene and inserted it in another piece of a scene. Well, the film is vibrant. Its editing is gripping and draws us into a unique and electrifying film in so many great ways. Thank you very much for your time. Ladies and gentlemen, Zach Steinberg, editor of American Night. Thank you again, Zach, and congratulations on the film. Thanks, Joe. Thank you. Good night.